Hello. Hi there. Hi. Were you guys waiting long? Mm -hmm. No. It's weird. There's only six. This is all we have on today's call. It's weird. That is odd. I know it's not that something's not right. Because my poll board's not even on. Hold on a minute. Here's Leslie. Okay. Hi. Hey Leslie, were you waiting long? Um, I couldn't get in at first. I'm at what did it I'm say? admitting people as soon as they pop up in the waiting room. It said I had to enter a code, so I tried to enter that code, but then I tried it again and it worked, so I'm not sure. It asked for a code? The first time I tried it did, but then but, it didn't the second time. Okay. Yeah, I think something's weird. I used the wrong link. She's having trouble too, see? Because I'm like, there were just the two of us on and we're like, um... <laughs> my whole board's not even on like it can't be that bad I'm really nice person like what's going on <laughs> I don't know why people are having trouble Andy just said she's having trouble logging on she's not in the waiting room yeah So weird. Kyle, why aren't you taking this from home? <laughs> I, uh, I've been working, but I'm good. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, we're at 12 now. I just expected like a flood. Like, it's funny. It says there's a network connection problem. That's what Andy's getting. Did any of you have any other problems? Anybody new joining? It took me a while to get in. It's fun for quite a while, but then finally I was able to get in. Why is that, Jenny? Is that weird? I don't know. It looks normal at my end. Yeah, I got right in too. Okay. We're just going to wait. I like to start right at seven o'clock, but I'm going to give it a few seconds here just because people are coming in and everybody's saying they have network problems but i don't i don't know why i feel like mr rogers <laughs> i see <laughs> Okay, so we're good, Jenny. You read a Madam Secretary? So? We can, um, as long as one more person beyond the board has a, is a paid PTA member, we can go ahead and vote on things. But we only have six. Can you guys meet your line? Thank you. Uh, who's a paid member that, that's on? And we've had the. So I just, I muted you, Stephanie, by mistake. Sorry. I'm a paid member. I okay, think. then we're then we're then we have enough. All right, am I unmuted now? Yes. 
Okay. Um, all right, I'd like to call this meeting to order for our PTA November meeting um, on November 29th at approximately 7.05 p.m. Uh, let's see, executive board attendance. Jenny, do you have that or do you wanna take roll call? You're on mute, Jen. I have just watching people come in. I have um, that um, Kyle is here, you're here, I'm here, Leslie is here, Andrea is here, and Andy is here. So that's put this at six executive board members. Perfect. Um, Jenny, do you want to go ahead and approve your minutes? And um, yep, that's fine. I just would like to make a motion. Um, I emailed out the minutes, the proposed minutes, uh, to all of the executive board, um, and um, I think they've been on the PTA website as well. Um, and um, as long as I, I'd like to make a motion to approve this proposed September minutes. I need a second. I second. Um, and then I need, um, I, I'm fancy. I've learned how to do this. Um, I have launched a poll or we could just vote out loud. You can you got it. answer the poll mm -hmm. or you can just, if everybody, if the executive board members would all raise their hand. And if we have one additional voting member who could put in the chat that they would approve the meeting minutes, that would be um, awesome for me. And then the meeting minutes will be approved. Did you guys all get the poll that popped up? Did everybody get that? I have four people answered right now. Okay. Leslie, did you get the poll that popped up? Okay. Yeah, I signed it. Thank you. Six. Okay. Think, we good? Um, yep, because I approved it as well. So that is- um, New technology. <laughs> Meeting minutes are approved. Awesome. And uh, Jenny, do you want to take the next two or you want me to? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's up to you. I just thought you're kind of professional. Keep going, girl. Um, that's fine. Um, is the next thing the, you want to do budget or bylaws? Uh, do bylaws and then do budget. Okay. We've had the, um, our proposed bylaws. Thanks to Elena. Um, we redid our bylaws. They have to be redone every three years. Um, they've been sitting on the PTA, CMPTA website for 30 days. And so we're in a position to have them approved. So I motion, we approve the proposed 2022, um, updated bylaws. I need a second. Second. Okay, and I am very, very fancy, and I think that I I have more than one poll. Where's my next poll? Mm -hmm. Um, here's my budget poll, and if I could get um the vote, that would be great. The budget I, one. Oh, I did the budget one. Okay, so we're gonna cancel that one, and I had them in a different order. Sorry about That's that. We're gonna sorry. end that one. I'm going to do the bylaws. We're going to launch the bylaws. Everyone Thank could you. vote on that. You are super fancy today. That is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm does really any, I should ask, does anyone have any questions about the bylaws? Because now would be the moment to discuss that if anyone had or a question. Or changes, yeah, or changes. <laughs> No, we're good. Okay. Um, I have five executive board members who have voted. So I need, um, if you're particularly if you're an executive board member, if you could vote. I can't see the people who voted on it until it's done. So um, I let me let me I guess verbally ask executive board members all in favor of approving the updated bylaws. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I have no opposed. And no so opposed. the bylaws are updated. Thank you. And then the um, last thing that we have, and I don't know if Leslie would like to address this, we have um, our Leslie um, has a proposed budget for the 2022 2023 school year. So I don't know, Leslie, do you have anything about that? Um, just that it's been on the website for a while, maybe a month <laughs> and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so if anyone has any questions about it, um, I mean, I can talk more about what's been happening, but it, this is just to approve the original budget, right? Correct. The, yeah, the proposed budget. Yep. So okay. any questions for anybody? No. Nope. Okay, here we go. And here is the proposed budget. Our last um, fancy thing. 
I can relaunch this. Here we go. Okay, hopefully that popped up for everybody. It did. Thank you. That's super cool. Five. Just need at least two more. Six. Actually, you only need five now that you approve the budget. Um, that is correct. So our um sorry. <laughs> our proposed budget is approved. Um, and the only other order of business that I have is since the last um, PTA meeting, we have approved electronically six motions. And so I'll just read those into the record right now, if that's okay. Yep. Um, we had a motion on um, October 14th, a motion to approve the, a grant request for 17, um, 13 and 68 cents for the art department, which was approved. Um, we had a motion to include um, the radio program and grants this year. It's a one-year subscription for $1,366.80. Um, and going forward, we're gonna include that as a line item in the budget. That was approved. On October 27th, we had a motion to approve the grant request for Mr. Dodge um, for 1,600 to purchase a swell graphic machine, which will produce ASL books. Um, that, again, that's 1,600, that was approved. On the 27th of October, we had a motion to approve $1,809.99 to support, oh no, that's the same one, I'm so sorry. That's the same one, we updated the amount to $1,809.99 um, right. um, for, uh, he needed a little bit of additional money. So that one was approved. On November 2nd, we had a motion to approve $515 to cover the museum entrance fees for Mr. Gonzalez's grant request to assist with an upcoming flex field trip. And on the 21st, we had a motion to spend $3,500 on supplies for the new student art room that all of um, any students, clubs, organizations will be able to utilize. Um, I don't know, Leslie, if you want to explain a little bit more of what you bought there, but um, I think that's would be a really great thing. And that one was also, that motion was also passed. You want me to or not? I yeah, can. go ahead. Just for good. Yeah, so it's um in conjunction with student government, and they had requested um large paper rolls, poster boards, pens, pencils, markers, paint, things that they need on a regular basis to make posters around the school. And then it's um so it's open to student government as well as any club in the school that needs any of those supplies. Perfect. Thank you. That's it for me for all the business. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie, you want to continue and just review briefly about budget where we're kind of sure. at? A few updates. Sure. We're all, thank you. Um, so most of our donations are received in the beginning of the school year in, in August and September. And right now we are running about $1,300 over budget in donations, which is good. And we have a few uh, fundraisers coming up that will just add to that on uh, number. And our biggest expense line item is the PTA grants. Uh, right now we have approved about $24,000 in grants and we've spent about 14,000. So those keep coming in monthly. And basically that's it. The detailed budget is found on the website. If you wanna see line by line what all the expenses are for the year, but the PTA grants is the definitely the largest line item. Perfect. Thank you for that update. Um, president's report, that's me. Um, we've got a few council updates of meetings I've attended since our last meeting. Sorry. <laughs> um, the Reflections District Ceremony Awards will be at Pierce Elementary School on May 8th at 6 p.m. Uh, December 20th, there will be a reception for the outgoing BOE members uh, that will be leaving, Kim and Adrian, and that will be December 20th at 530, I think at the Board of Ed uh, location, they were going to update us with that. Um, coffee and conversation. I didn't write down a date for that. That can't be good. I'll have to get back to you on that. And Bika does a coffee and conversation once a month. And her December one, I did not write down the date. So my apologies. It's at 530 in Franklin at the Kier Kruger house. So all these will be posted too for you. 
Um, unmodified budget was approved for the district and it's been already evaluated and they gave, they, they got a big thumbs up and Birmingham school district is doing fabulous so far <laughs> on a balanced budget. So that was also discussed with us. We also got a strategic plan yesterday at our meeting. Um, it's a booklet and Kyle, you should be getting these booklets too. And I think they're gonna mail some out mm -hmm. to parents as well. I have like three copies. So I can leave one just in the meantime, but it's amazing. It's very well done. Very, very well done. So they, I guess they haven't had a strategic plan in like 10 years or something. So they have a strategic strategic plan. Thank you, Andy. Um, so, so that is finished and it's beautiful. Um, the coffee with Ambika um, will be December 7th at 5.30 p.m in Franklin at the Kruger house. Um, and then the BFE auction, they're actually doing a live bash, which is the auction in person at Townsend Hotel, uh, downtown Birmingham on February 4th. Tickets will be $200 and will start going on sale December 1st for the early bird per person. Um, and then January 1st, they moved to 225 a person. Okay. That's a lot of the updates that I have from council meeting that I wanted to cover. And we have, I just wanted to discuss too, there was a big thing with the all night party at both um, for seniors at both Seahome and Groves. And I guess in the past uh, they had been soliciting elementary schools for donations. And our PTA council said, no, no. You really can't do that. See Home and Groves can do it, but other schools in the district should not be doing it. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. So Leslie actually emailed out the all night party um, leaders and let them know there's been a change. Um, and that I didn't even know that that was a thing. So wanted to mention that we actually have two fundraisers coming up. Get your wallets out. Uh, December 1st we have a really fun fundraiser and it's at a Sea Home Parents uh, Home and Garden Store, it's called in Troy. I don't know if anyone's ever been there before, but cute knickknacks, really cute furniture. They have side tables and couches, throw pillows. They've got serving dishes, serving pieces, accent pieces for your house. It's a really cool shop. And we are running that. You will get a 10% discount there. If you mention you're a Sea Home parent or Sea Home, grab your friends and neighbors. And uh, the fundraiser is going to run from 3 to 7.30. And we uh, as as C Home PTA, we'll get it. We'll get ten percent of that sale. And then we actually have one more that hasn't been advertised that we just locked down December 9th through eleventh, and it's it's a um it's a store that just opened a little while ago in Birmingham, and it's called Restore Hyper Wellness. They offer infrared therapy, oxygen facials, cryo, and much more. Um, if you purchase the weekend of December 9th through 11th, and you'll see some marketing from us on this as well, they actually are offering customers 15% off as a discount, and then PTA gets 15% of the revenue. So all in all, they're giving 30%. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, just wanted to give a shout out real quick. Don't forget about our first Fridays. We've got a first Friday coming up this week. Um, our links and stuff should be on our website, but I'll make sure that those are published for easier access if you want to donate um, some cards, gift cards for our fabulous staff. And you can actually Venmo also if you need to. And we're doing one other thing. Um, Teacher treats once a month has been done, and we were approached um, by a fam by a couple families that wanted to sponsor these treats. So what we've kind of done is for $150, um, we'll handle everything, and the treat will have um, a mention of your family sponsored by the family and PTA, see home PTA. So 
it um, goes directly to the teachers. Like it, it's a snack. Jenny actually handles that um, and picks out really cool, fun season related, <laughs> holiday related treats for our staff once a month. So if you're interested, there will be a sign up genius also for that for the rest of the school year starting in January. And I think that's it from me. I believe you have, that's you have a question about where the store is located in Troy and what's it called? It's called Home and Garden, actually, in Troy. Here, I'll look it up. We we have um some advertising going on, but let me let me look that up real quick. I'm not I don't have the uh here it is. It's at 2826 Industrial Road. Industrial Row Drive. Sorry. And that's in Troy, Michigan, 48084. Very cute store, fun gifts. I absolutely love this store. Like, it's a problem for me. <laughs> and bring your friends. Anyone's invited. Thank you, Andy. All right. So I think we're, we're kind of moving. We're moving very fast here. Um, I think next, Mrs. Hall. Would you like to start with your principal report? Sure. Um, <clears throat> we have um, one thing I do want to mention as we unfortunately are coming up on um, tomorrow being the year anniversary of um, the tragedy at Oxford High School. Um, we have, um, I made an announcement today in our, in our building that um, tomorrow we plan, I encourage everyone to wear blue and gold or their Oxford Strong gear if they have some. We had purchased some, I think, at the time, near the time. So so many staff and students have that, but certainly even blue and gold would be wonderful. Um, I attend a Ca Oakland County Principals Consortium and um, we met last month, uh, um, just a couple of weeks ago, and um, we were asking the principal what she felt you know we could do to support and that was one thing she su suggested um, but she really just thinks she would prefer that we all just have a normal and safe day and um, so we're not doing anything other than that um, but um, we're trying to balance that idea of of supporting them and being aware with also having a normal school day without reminding um, our students of, of the tragic events. So we're trying to achieve that balance. Um, today, uh, we, we shared the message from Sheriff, Sheriff um, Oakland County Sheriff uh, Mike Bouchard um, because they've seen an uptick in threats, um, not here in Birmingham, but in the county. And so, um, and many of these are by students who just want to get out of school or just being, you know, um, mischievous. And um, so he just wanted to make sure everyone understood that they were going to pursue those. Um, that it's against the law. It's, you know, it's frightening for people, emotionally trying for people. And so it was just a two minute message. We um, both Groves and Seaholm uh, showed that message today, second hour. But the, the um, sheriff had asked that we show it in grades four through 12 last week, but we had our final exam. So um, we could we only had fifth hour exam. By the time we got it, it was kind of late coming. So today we showed that. Um, we always have our counselors and um, adults in the building, our teachers who are there um, and receptive and um, for our students, should they find that some of these, these things are emotionally exhausting or trying for them. And so we encourage them to come see the counselors and to come to us um, if they need us. And um, along that vein too, as you know, we've been working, we did a safety audit in the district at the end of last year. And, um, we have been working toward improving security in the in the building. Um, I think it was pretty apparent last year when we contracted with Allied Security Company at the front door and the and the pool door that they they were not adequately supervising the entrance and the exit. Um, so we have um, created a what we're we're shifting from kind of the hall monitor and the security you know contractors at the doors to a security team. We have the Birmingham um, hired Aaron Morandini, who is the Birmingham um, Public Schools Security Director. And he and Susan and I had um, met um, 
last month and we interviewed a variety of people to join um, the team here. And it was really important to Aaron and to us that we each school high school had a um, security, someone, at least one person on the security team who had background in police. So we were lucky enough to get Steve Tycho, who is um, a retired police officer from Royal Oak, and he was a school resource officer there as well. Um, so he's a new face here in the building. Um, we also um, was we were lucky enough to get um, Marcy Benyon, um, and she is um, here as well. So we have a female security guard, and she has experience at um, public schools in security. And um, and then we have the three existing Jim Lytle, the kids door Jim, um, James Bandy, and Curtis. Um, Bents. And so we have a security team. We have removed any duties like when we used to have them deliver messages or we would have them deliver packages or paper and things like that. We no longer have them do that. They are focused so solely on security. They are being trained in security. They um, do sweeps to make sure the doors are locked um, and not propped open. Um, we've worked with the teachers to ensure that um, we have um, lanyards with identity, you know, our identification on it, and we have our students um, in the hallways um, at a minimum with passes. We are also working on getting vape detectors in the bathrooms because we do recognize that's a problem. Um, these detectors will recognize not only vape, but also um, vandalism, so loud noises, that kind of thing. Um, and it sends basically a message directly to the administrator or security guard and they can go right to that, that place. So um, we see them as effective now for a while. They were, they were not cost effective and they were often dismantled by the students, but they're getting better. Um, and so we are looking at installing um, those in our um, probably um, middle and high school, but certainly we're gonna probably start at the high school. Um, so that is all good news. And um, I think our, our staff and our students are feeling good about having that kind of extra layer of, of security and safety here. And um, so just that's what we've been doing. We're starting the second trimester. We think we had a good first trimester. I feel like um, as we um, emerge from COVID, I think we are gaining strength and um, we are you know, getting back to a certain normal um, academic and social um, behavior pattern. Um, it, it is a little bit behind. The kids are a little bit behind. We have noticed that um, uh, because I think because of that uh, isolation that they had in the online learning, which um, really impacted, I think, some of their learning. But I think we are seeing us emerge even stronger from that. So, um, so we're, we're pleased about that. Perfect. Stephanie, I don't know how you want me to proceed through some of your agenda. I'm happy to do that too, but that's just the report. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I think you answered. Well, we can go. We can go back. So my our first question that we've gotten basically since last meeting. Um, I have three. The first one is the uh, discussion in. You know what? Let's do the bathrooms first, since you mentioned that, and just stay on topic if that's okay with you. So the questions that came up. So I summarize them. Mm -hmm. Our um, bathrooms are closed many times during school the school day. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for an update on why this is and the new technology that will be introduced that you kind of talked about already. Great. I know. Thank you. I I should have remembered that. Um, oh, that's okay. The bathrooms, we, we, we don't lock the bathrooms unless there's a generally a problem with the bathrooms. And what we're finding is, number one, our building is fairly old. And so the pipes and the plumbing are old. And um, number two, the students are throwing things down the toilets that cause the toilets to back up. And so we have to lock the toilet, the, the room, when we have we have a problem and when too many stalls are out of commission. And so that's one reason a door might be locked. Um, another is um, some of the vandalism, you know, that we're experiencing, which we is, has, um, has increased um, from uh, pre vaping era. It's not even pre COVID. Um, I think there was that big lull where kids stopped smoking in the bathrooms mostly. Um, but didn't get vapes weren't out yet. And so I don't know that they visited the bathroom that often. So vandalism, you know, wasn't really a problem. There was always some graffiti, that kind of thing. 
And um, now that the kids are in the bathroom more um, and, uh, and we have seen an uptick in some of that, there's uh, graffiti and um, sometimes we'll lock the door um, if, until we get that taken care of. Um, so it does happen that the door is locked on occasion, um, but there are, I was counting the bathrooms, we have um, recognizing they're, they're male and female and we have unisex as well. Um, we have about 20, probably all told about 26 bathrooms in the in the building so there's one going to be open near you know somewhere but they might have to to walk a little bit um, down the hall uh, but there's always a bathroom available um, should the student need it and um, we have bathrooms here in our main office if you know in an emergency there's ba there are bathrooms in the student center um, that they can um, access uh, and so I think there's a bathroom available but Occasionally they are locked. Okay, I think that answers everything. Any questions from anyone? About the bathrooms. About the bathrooms. <laughs> no, I get it. Well, bathrooms, our bathrooms are bad. I mean- Yeah, no, I get it. And they are just horrible. And so when we had them make, you know, redo the ones, and I mean, we threw a fit and said we needed, the kids needed a decent bathroom. And I basically said that they were, um, destroying the bathrooms and writing into in the graffiti because the bathrooms were so poor. Well, mm -hmm. we we redid a beautiful spot like bathroom and then they they proceeded to you know vandalize it. So um, that was disappointing. Um, but uh, I think they still need and they still deserve a, a a a good bathroom. I mean, a bathroom that is pleasant to be in. So. There's Thank you. also, um, real quick, also sometimes over the weekends when the custodians have cleaned the bathrooms, they lock it. So depending on a Monday morning occasion that we have come into a bunch of bathrooms being locked and we have learned now on Monday mornings to do a little sweep to make sure we unlock those bathrooms in the mornings. Perfect. Thank you. I think you have totally answered that question. Ready for your next one? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is the price is right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't have a big wheel to spin though. Discussion in regards to the power out outage. Mm -hmm. What happened with communication the days of the outages? Um, what is being changed to increase communication if this happens again? Right. There were um, definitely problems with the communication system and those started um, in a variety of places, including central office and including here um, at the um, school level. Uh, we, I apparently, um, it came early, this power outage, it was unexpected and um, some of the people who were in the communication chain had left the district. And so there was some confusion about how to she has it. operate the- what? system. So there was that. Um, secondly, here in the building um, for the, um, we had um, not been informed, okay, for that second outage that the, the power was out at Seaholm. It wasn't out anyplace else. There was no indication. The custodian saw it was out and he communicated via email to um, his supervisor who did not get the email because she was sleeping. And then um, I did not learn about the outage until one teacher came in at like six o'clock or 10 after six that morning. So by then I'm scrambling also. And by then the buses had moved and we were communicating with central office. And so by the time we had um, determined that the power was not going to come back on um, in time to, to run school, it was, it was late and that was really unfortunate. Um, we also had a hard time with our own communication system, and we have done um, a variety of things to shore up that system and those protocols. So central office is on board. They have their communication now um, settled, and we do as well, and our custodians know whom to call, including me, whatever time our power goes out. So I'm, you know, putting those things in motion because it takes time for us to cancel school. Um, and we now too have a communication system that we've tested through um, Mike DeLois and me that we're, and Kathy, my assistant, where we can uh, send a text um, to you all. Uh, if you get our emails, you'll be able to get a text as well. And we've done that several times now. So um, I believe we'll be able to communicate in a much um, quicker fashion. 
And um, the same with the staff, that same thing happened with the staff. And now I have a group text with the staff. So we are, um, I believe we've, we've shored up that system and um, we'll, we'll be in, in a good place moving forward. Perfect. So something bad happened, but we turned it into a good thing moving <laughs> forward, right? That's how I kind of look at it, right? Thank you. <laughs> Well, you didn't know that this has really never happened before, right? Where just the school wow, yeah. went, at least not for a long time, I should say. Right. And we've had such turnover in staff that it's hard, yeah. you know, the protocols um, and with COVID and we just didn't have them all in place. Well, they can, I also, can I also add um, that uh, what was also in flux at that time was the switch over with our communication system. We were able, we had been able to access it via computer, um, but you know, when the power was out of the school, the internet doesn't work. And there was, there wasn't um, a viable option with the, the text at that time because it hadn't been updated from the, the district. So that was also the issue. There was no power at the school. There was no internet, there was no phones. So that contributed to the issue. Thanks to Lois, yep. Perfect, thank you. Okay, you ready for your last one? Let's see. Uh, I think we want to go over process and procedure with mm -hmm. curriculum and books. Books, right. Um, as I, I think we've all seen throughout our, our country, um, we are having um, some concerns raised about curriculum and um, the process of book selection um, in curriculum and in um libraries, okay, in public school libraries. And I want to address that here. I have heard from some parents with some concerns about um, particular texts in our English curriculum and um, in our library. And, um, and we've seen that again across our, not only our country, but um, on the state and our community and our counties, um, nearby counties. So I thought it was probably prudent to talk about that with PTA and maybe explain some of the processes and procedures that we use to select books so that you're aware of them. It might not change your mind about the books, but at least you're aware of how we do it and then what the procedure would be if um, a parent objected to one of those books. Um, we have always um, had that option um, for a, a parent to uh, to have the child not read a certain text. And, and I've asked um, Robin uh, to come in. She's our English department chair, and she's going to um, explain kind of the process where we, whereby we get books into our curriculum and the process whereby a parent can um, choose to have the, uh, his or her child re read another, another book. So welcome Robin Moten here, and, um, and she is a, a beloved teacher here at Seahawk. <laughs> Gosh, I, I'm not sure about that, Kyle. Um, <laughs> thanks. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a, a great night. So let's talk about the, the process for choosing books first. It's um, not at all as glamorous as those of us who are who are real readers would like to believe, right? You you find a novel that you adore and you think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and teach this next, next year. No, no, you're not. Um, Right now, we have a four-year process. Uh, that changed from actually a longer period of time. That's, that's a little bit shorter. The process itself starts with review. So um, just for lack of a better phrase, what we used to call it was you're on cycle. You're on curriculum cycle. So um, when you're on curriculum cycle, the first phase is that research phase where you're looking at what's being done um, both from a, from a national perspective, a local perspective, are we still teaching the classics? What are we looking at with contemporary texts? And why are we looking at those texts? Are they critically reviewed? Who's been critically reviewing them? We also look at data collection, data collection from, um, from students and um, from teachers. And this is a place where you can say, yes, this, this book seems like it could fit well, but that's not the that's only that would only be the first step necessarily. Um, after that, once the the cycle begins, then we begin to um, take lists of books, including the books that we currently teach, and eventually those are lined up with state and district 
uh, standards, ELA standards, making sure that we, we fit with all of those stand, standards. So every lesson plan, everything that's developed, not just the text itself, but uh, everything that goes along with the text that has to be aligned with state standards and district standards. And once that happens, then there is another process by which we take the books that we're thinking, okay, here's what works, here's what doesn't, but here's what works. And they go through several councils. One is the English Language Arts uh, Literacy Council. Actually, it starts at the building level. So just for example, if I wanted to teach a new text, I would do all of the research first, put it all together and align it. And I wouldn't be able to do anything until I talked to the English department at the building level. Then from there, it proceeds to uh, the, the district level. So the two high schools, then from there, it proceeds to a larger council and it ends up um, at the largest council, which includes some parents, um, a, pro a couple of students, teachers, administrators from other districts. And then from there, it's uh, approved and that's that's what happens. So no, not, not a particularly glamorous process, but we're, I, I know I'm thrilled that we have this rigorous process in place because now, you know, you can't just say that these books are kind of chosen willy nilly um, and, uh, and put into our curriculum that just simply doesn't happen in, in Birmingham. With our books, if there, as Kyle mentioned, if there is a book that, you know, you would find that's questionable for your child, then the procedure is pretty simple. You just contact the teacher and, uh, and the teacher will say, yeah, there's, there's a book available. And we have a list of books that are available depending on the grade level um, that, uh, that will allow your child to opt out of the book that you find questionable and, uh, and then take, that, uh, take the, uh, the alternate book in its place. So. That's that's our process for the English department. Sorry to bore you all with that. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. So it is a you know it is a process. Um, I was the department chair, the English department chair for many years, um, and we do really spend a lot of time talking about the books and trying to balance the classics, um, the you know the old classics that that we all studied as English majors in college, and that maybe you read um, when you were in high school. And then um, with some, maybe some newer texts that we're that we're hoping to appeal to um, younger, you know, the younger students and um, give them something to want to read. Okay, and so it's it is a balance. And our job as passionate English teachers is to show the students that you know William Shakespeare and Nathaniel Hawthorne and Virginia Woolf are equally as fascinating as you know some of the texts that they're they're reading um, at home. And um, we, I, we have varying degrees of success, but I think we have a great English department and Robin is a great leader there. And, um, and I think for the most part, our kids are, are happy with those texts. Um, but I, again, I wanna be completely transparent um, about this process and that a parent is always um, uh, able to object to a text um, and we will try to make it, and we do make it as discreet as possible with our students so that they don't feel um, like they are being targeted or, you know, they don't feel funny. Um, but I think it's a conversation that um, parents have with their kids at home and you know your children um, better than anyone. We are looking at the standards and what is generally appropriate for that age group in our estimation and our professional um, opinion, uh, but you know your kids best. And so um, sometimes it's that conversation that you're having with your children at home, but also with um, then maybe the teacher. Um, I've had, you know, parents call me, ask me about a book, why we're teaching the book, and we've had that conversation, and then they choose to read it. And then I've had on occasion where they've chosen not to. We don't get a lot of objections to books, um, but we we have, you know, um, and we are always happy to to replace it um, with another text. And we get those complaints for a variety of reasons. But I would say we generally, in my experience, we've never had more than you know one or two a year, um, and even some years we have not. Um, but uh, you know, the again, it's the professional opinion of us as. Um, 
you know, teachers, but it's also in conjunction with like the National Council Council of Teachers of English, you know, and all the best practice in, um, you know, in those organizations that guide us as English teachers as well. So, um, and the library, and Anne wasn't able to, to be here tonight, I don't think, I don't see her. Um, the library is more of a, you know, um, you know, the students able to check out books, you know, and, you um, and parents, but parents do have control over that as well. Um, if a parent um, is concerned about books that might be in our library, please feel free to reach out to Anne Truesdell. She's the librarian for both Groves and Seaholm. And she works with students to pick um, books that are appropriate to them and to their interests and to their age. And she, um, she can also tag a student um, in her system so that the student can't check a book out if you uh, deem it inappropriate. So we try to um, make sure that the parents always have that measure of control. Um, and if a parent objects to a book, there is a form, a district form that we have from the library that you can fill out. And if you feel like the, the book shouldn't be in the library, you can um, you can fill out that form and that thing, I think that goes to another council or committee and they, um, they look into that as well. So um, I think you would love our librarian. I know you, many of you knew her, she was um, the librarian over at uh, BCS for 20 years um, and she's been fantastic. And so we want to work with you. We want to partner with you. Um, we want you involved and you've always been just wonderful partners. And so we are open and receptive to your concerns and um, we, you know, we're not going to dismiss them at all. We sincerely want to know how you, what you think and we want your input. So um, please feel free to reach out to Robin to your, to your child's teacher, um, to Robin or to Anne. And I think Robin um, is sending out a letter um, via the department, right, um, Robin? Uh, because we've had this conversation, again, in part because of the things that have happened in our community and our, our world right now. And um, Robin is working with her department to make sure that she um, introduces when there's going to be a book that might be um, have be on some kind of challenge list or might be of concern to someone. We're not trying to hide that, okay? Um, if if we if we think you might be concerned about it, we want to be upfront and transparent about that. So, uh, Robin, I'm not sure if you want to share any of the details with them. Sure. Yeah, and I, I thought I saw something in the chat. So I'm um... there is there's a question. Oh, right. Right. Okay. So yeah, uh, there's a letter that that is going out tomorrow, actually, and this sort this addresses, I think, the question that I saw in the in the chat. There is not a a list, a comprehensive list of all of the books that we offer, because quite honestly, that's a really long list. All of the books that's ever that have ever been approved by the Board of Education, it's a super long list. The list that's available is the list that comes on the syllabus when the teacher sends the syllabus out. All of the teachers send out a syllabus uh, tomorrow. We, we, as a department, we have made a pledge that we do not give out uh, a syllabus on the first day just because we want to take that time to actually get to know our students and, and talk to our students. And sometimes it's a little pressure packed uh, during the, the trimester, but we do feel like it's important to uh, establish relationships with students. So none of our students got a syllabus today. Many of our students will get a syllabus tomorrow. And along with that syllabus, you will see a letter from, it's from me. Uh, and uh, the, it basically lays out all of the texts that we feel right now are, are could be could be questionable for for someone because they've either been uh, challenged at a national level or they've been challenged at a, at a local level and that includes our district. So those are listed. But as far as uh, a comprehensive list, please check the syllabus for the course that your child is in, and you should see all the books that are going to be read during during the trimester period. I think that covers the question actually. I do I do have a couple questions. One, we've talked about how to um, take your child off of a, you know, off of a book from being read during the class and stuff. But how about like every year do you guys submit since it takes four years to introduce a new novel, right, to the kids? Are you constantly adding books every year then since it's such a long process? No. No. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. We won't um, because it takes so long to be approved. We can't just throw something in. Um, sometimes a pilot course is introduced, but that still has to go through a, a little bit shortened version of that process and approval process and the board has to approve it. But we rarely do that and we haven't done that in years. So um, have we added new literature to it in years? To be no, taught we, have not. we have not added a new book in our uh, curriculum, English curriculum in um, probably seven years. Uh, seven years. Yeah, I, it was actually it was the last year I was the English department chairperson at the time we just finished up our new curriculum and it was about to be implemented when I became the assistant principal. So um, so it's been seven years. So the books that, they're, that the students are reading now are the books that we chose seven years ago. Um, and we do like that process because we may in fact choose to say, okay, this book, the kids didn't respond to it as well as we had hoped. We may change it, you know, for something else. Um, and, but then we have to go through that process again of what is that book we're going to change it with, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a, it is a long, long process. It so, would be nice maybe if something actually got added. There's a lot of books, right? That are <laughs> yeah. obviously, right? Hundreds of thousands, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I would just think that the, the addition, you know, we talk so much about taking away, but we're not really talking about the addition mm -hmm. of books with um, times of change, technologies change, people have changed, people have pronouns now, right? Like, all that from seven years ago, you can't even compare to today's world, right? To be honest. Right. So I'm just putting it out there as a parent that it would be awesome if we could maybe take a look at stuff since it's been seven years and see if what's new out there. That's all. Sometimes I, I will say that, so as Stephanie, you know, Ethan was was in my in my 12A class. You know. Um, <laughs> So we and I, I did a new book this year um, called American Born Chinese, and it was new to the students. Mm -hmm. I read it. For, it's a graphic novel. I read it for the first time last summer and fell in love with it. However, it's not new to our curriculum. It actually was the last time we did a curriculum uh, cycle review seven years ago. It was chosen and it was purchased. And so it's been sitting in our closet. It's been used kind of sporadically in a couple other grade levels. But this was the first time that it was used for 12A. So it okay. seems new, yeah. but it's not, it's not really new. And sometimes, and that's really kind of how we try to keep our, our curriculum fresh. Um, you know, maybe you're not doing, you know, as long as the anchor texts are the ones that we make sure, first of all, that, that we teach the same thing as, as growth. Gotcha. Um, so we don't, we don't go off the rails when it, when it comes to any of that. Uh, but uh, though after the anchor text, when it comes to supplemental materials, it's possible that you swap out and maybe you know you do something that hasn't been done before, or something along those lines. So it does it okay. helps to keep it a little fresh. Gotcha. That makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. No <laughs> we do have another question here. Um, aren't the students able to read books of choice as well? Right. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. Right. Yes. Um, we've tried to, and that was one, uh, that was an intentional move on the English department's um, part as well. Uh, when they uh, we we recognize that one of the best practices in teaching is for students to be able to choose what they're reading, but those texts are all approved, right, Robin? I think um, you know we have. Go ahead. Sorry, I forget my hat. <laughs> the English no, is coming I, out in her. The English uh, professor. No, it's it's fine. It's it's actually great uh, that that Kyle does that. Um, yeah, that's that is something. It really depends on the teacher and and the class whether or not and and how you structure the class. Um, I am I am pretty famous for not offering choice because the curriculum's just so packed. I can barely get stuff in that I that I can't. So my bad. Um, I I am not the best at that. But I have teach my department. Luckily that are really good at, at offering choice units. And yes, those books should be approved. Um, and uh, they do come from our stock. So basically you're telling kids you have a choice, but it's from the books that we have, you know, in a couple of different book, book room locations. Um, I think I saw in the chat, someone said, asked if seven years is average. Um, I'm on a, 
a committee of other English department chairs around Oakland County specifically. So I can't really speak to, to Wayne or, or very many other districts, but uh, I can tell you that there are districts that are all over the place. Uh, so like Troy, there's, you know, it's not even a year. They can just sort of introduce new things. It's kind of amazing. Um, but at the same time, very scary, quite honestly, because you know, in a year's time, you just don't you just don't know all the critical reviews, and you don't know um, all the things that can happen. So again, I I I think four years is is not bad. Seven has been I I'll be honest, slightly problematic, but um, but I think four gives us enough time to do the research that Kyle referred to to really make sure that we're in touch with with NCTE and best practices and um, and align everything and and also again stay stay with state standards because those don't change a whole lot for English thank goodness they're they're more focused I think on theory uh, and and other subject areas but um, they they can and have have changed over the years so I'm pretty um, pretty happy that we are not doing things every year that would just be a nightmare I think there are there's a question there about um from the media center there are i think the freshmen might i'm not sure if they still do they might allow like the student they have reading time in class and so the student gets to pick a book go to the library and pick a book and that's what he he or she reads um but i believe or at least it was you know that when i was there that that the parent also had to kind of sign off on the book that this was something you know they're going to do they're going to pick a book in the library talk to your kids about what books you know you think would be good for them to read um and the other we do have a class called contemporary literature and that class is designed for students to choose their own reading okay so we really tried to um it's one of it was when it was an elected it was one of the most popular electives we ran in the English department because the kids just they were they were given reading time in class and they could read whatever they wanted and it was designed to promote reading and a joy of reading and um, an ease in reading a fluidity um, process and each kid could pick at his own level the teacher was a guide and then would talk to the kids about um, talk to the students about finding theme and finding um, what is characterization and what how does setting influence the story, things like that. But they were all reading different stories and then they would come together and have a talk about something. And um, I sat in on several of those classes and was fascinated um, in listening to the kids talk about their books. So that class, I know for sure, does allow students to pick whatever book they want to read within reason. There, you know, there, there were some <laughs> that, that we would say no. You know, you can't read that. <laughs> yeah, back back uh, when Fifty Shades of Grey, which I'm sure was a title no, no one's really familiar with. Um, but when when that was popular, we, we did have a few kids that tried to tried to bring that in and it was a no, no. So awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Hold on, I think there's one more. OK, that's making me really laugh. OK. Uh, Yes, please, Stephanie, great suggestion. There are so many amazing new texts every year, especially within the last four years. I teach in Troy and they are able to introduce books once every year. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. That is not the process we do here. That's why, I, That's why. since it takes four years of why I brought that up is if it takes four years to actually get uh, approval and everything, it would, I'm just surprised that at least one book isn't introduced every year to go through the process just because it does take four years, right? So it's been seven years since it was updated. Let's say this year, you're going to add two more, right? Let's just say, mm -hmm. well, that's going to take, you know, another four years after the seven. I mean, that just seems like a long length of time. That's why I was wondering if maybe the thought process maybe could change a little bit and books could be, you know, new books could be introduced every year since it does take four years for approval. Just a suggestion as a parent on her way out. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I will I will take that back and I know um, Kyle uh, will as well and um, we'll we'll see we'll see what we can do. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I just want to say you know how I am about time. It is 759 ladies and gentlemen. I think we're wrapped up. Are there any questions from anyone here other than what's been in the chat? 
If so, if you don't want to say anything or, or add to the chat right now, please email me, stephanie.showish at gmail.com. My email is on um, the PTA website. No question is not a good question. So if you need anything, let us know. I'm going to call this meeting to a close at 7.59 p.m. tonight. And I thank you all for your time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.